Welcome to US City 360. I'm Ginger Chang. Today's feature calls our attention to the Jing Si or Still Thoughts aphorisms, which are a collection of Dharma Master Zheng Yan sayings. The aphorisms are rooted in Buddhist teachings, but they convey conventional, everyday wisdom for people. One individual who's been able to experience the wisdom of the Still Thoughts aphorisms is Vic Ng, the director of Tichi's Boston Service Center. Welcome, Vic. Hi, well, everybody. So, the original inspiration of the Jing Si aphorisms is due to the Gideon's Bible. They're basically the Bibles we find in hotels. Do you think the idea will work? Yeah, I think it's a great idea. I remember uh, back in uh, a few years ago, and I participate one of these executive training. Mm -hmm. And after a very long day, and the, uh, back to the hotel, I like to find something simple, easy to read, and can refresh myself. And at that moment, I flip it through, and then I find their Bibles. Then the first thing pop into my mind is why there's no genes of aphorism in there. So even before the, the whole book donation giveaway, you already had this idea, hoping that we can have the books in the hotel. Right, so when I heard that, I kind of said, wow. Um, it's great because um, uh, people think alike. Mm -hmm. Well, like you, the volunteers in the first segment believe that these words must be spread with more people in the U.S. Thus, we're going to go follow the efforts of Tsuji volunteers in Northern California and Las Vegas and see how they've been trying to appeal to hotels and motels. Why is it appealing to people? It is deep and yet simple. Dharma Master Chen was able to translate Dharma into a language where 99% of the people can understand. I believe some, someday, somewhere, someone can change your life because it's I knew this book was the one I wanted to put in every hotel room right away. I am from Northern California, Oakland. This is Hoover Dam. It's 80, 90 degrees here. We are here in Nevada to give away the Jinx aphorisms. We hope Dharma Master Cheng Yun's words can give them the wisdom to improve their lives. This is a group of Tsuji volunteers from Northern California. They traveled in California, Nevada, and Arizona with Jing Si aphorism books, visiting every single hotel along the highways to give out the books. What happened is one person one day, he found this book, he read the book, he absolutely loved it, and he donated more than 10,000 books to us. Maybe somebody will be like him, or able to have a chance to change the person's life. The man who believed in these books is Andy Gao. He is a philanthropist who realized that money alone cannot solve the world's problems. But for a long time, he couldn't find a multilingual book offering spiritual guidance. However, in 2010, Andy stayed at a hotel and found a book of Jing Si aphorisms and found it clear and effective. Everyone is a Buddha nature and a Bodhisattva strength and spirit. When most people stay in a hotel room, they have nothing to do at night. Sometimes they watch TV to kill time. So if people can read this book during that period of time, they can be inspired. I believe everyone has a conscience and they can find it at a specific moment in their life. If one person can be enlightened by this book among the 10,000 books I donate, then it's well worth it. When Andy came to our Tsuji U.S. headquarters, he mentioned about Jing Si aphorisms. It was marvelous he had wanted to donate the books to hotels, but no one knew the right approach. However, we encountered a lot of difficulties because we wanted to promote a book that originates from Taiwan to the Western society. Since 2010, volunteers tried very hard to break the ice. However, due to the cultural, language, and even religious barrier, they couldn't muster up the courage to reach out to non-Chinese businesses. Every time Andy would ask us how many more books we need, he wanted to supply us with more each year, but we knew that there was still a lot left over in the warehouse and we had no way to distribute them. 
In 2013, two volunteers joined this book donation project. They are so courageous, just like the Buddhist monk Shinzuan in his journey to the West. These volunteers traveled along the highways. They would rather take risks and venture out than staying still. Yeah. <笑> They are very brave. They took 1,000 books with them. It was so heavy that the weight of the books damaged the car. From January 2013 to March 2013, they gave out 5,000 books within two months. I think when we first started this project, I was thinking about um, how to approach the hotel. And so I started to uh, pick up hotels in, in my uh, local community. And then I started calling them. But after I called about 10 of them, and none of them are interested. So I decided to invite our local uh, sister to, to, to go visit the hotel directly instead. It says, if we can reduce our desire, there's nothing really worth getting upset about. So it helps people to keep positive thinking. They're welcome to take it as a souvenir and we'll replace the book for you. Mm -hmm. So it just passed on the good deed, mm -hmm. one to the other. Okay. Would you like to do the same? Well, it's free. <laughs> yeah, but uh, well, well, all right, okay. okay. So 60, 61 bucks. Yeah. And ended up out of the 10 hotels that I called, three of them accepted it. So I was a, a kind of surprised that um, the face to face interface actually works better. When I show them the book and show them Jing Si, I feel like they, they can connect with us right away. So I feel like this is the best way to approach these strangers. Brian and Sophia started to uh, visit hotels in Oakland and using the same approach and they got some success as well. Hi Brian, nice I'm Carol. To meet you. Nice Hi. to meet you. I just want to talk about um, the book uh, we tried to put into all the hotel motels. This book really changed my life. Uh, so that's why I decided to become a full-time volunteer. My friend told me, he said, I'm crazy because I quit my job. How in the world I, I, I want to do this? Plus, my job is much easier than this, this project. Hi, how are you? Good. My name's Brian. Kind of Buddhism? Uh, well, not necessary. A lot of, you know, there's not so many religions in this country. So sometimes people, they feel like they don't feel comfortable putting religion books in the room. So we need to come and people say, well, this is not about religion. This is about philosophy, the way of lifestyle, the way how people can put their negative uh, thoughts behind and create more positive thoughts. Yeah. But sometimes you want to read something, something meaningful, something uh, you want to do. Oh, yeah. I'm a finance officer, so I have a very easy job. I do, you know, numbers, reports, analyze all the numbers. When I, in my office, I'm the one who say no to people. You know what? This franchise, um, uh -huh. the franchise, we yes. cannot put. Maybe we can share one uh, phrase with you, if you don't um, mind. Well, I don't think we'll be interested. We've got a lot of rejection. I feel bad, I feel sorry, you know. This couple of times my tears came out. Because the, somebody's, uh, sometimes their, their allergy was really bad. Now if somebody say no, I say, oh, thank you. Because, one, the person might not be ready. Two, not a big deal. One no, okay. 100 no's. Fine, but at least I got 300, 400, 1,000 years. I don't know how many people got impacted by this book. Maybe you can show her the book and then explain to her why we're here. You can give us a call. Actually give it hotel the chance to pass on the good deed. And then we can, you know, arrange the time, make a point with him. Thank you so much, appreciate it. Thank, Thank you very stuff. much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Since the publication of the first volume of the Still Thoughts Aphorisms in 1989, they've become widely read and appealed to people from all walks of life. Vict, 
So regardless of race, creed, and culture, do you think you have to be Buddhist to actually be appealed by the aphorisms? Okay, as a matter of fact, I grew up in a Christian family to this aphorism and the, uh, because it's more a wisdom for day-to-day -day life, how you can apply it is true and good for everybody. Then we've seen that the aphorisms can address different categories in life, but have you personally used them to um, face any difficulty? Um, I remember one of the challenges I faced was in uh, 2000. 10. I've been identified as skin cancer. It uh, is on my left thigh. It's a, it's a tiny one though, but suddenly the entire world is different. The interesting thing is um, I've been long time reading and practicing genes aphorism. So mm -hmm. I kind of get myself ready already when this kind of difficulty time encountered. I wasn't scared at all. As a matter of fact, when uh, my physician uh, uncovered the message to me. He was so sad about this news. And I have to cheer him up. So he was more sad than he, you. Exactly right. And the reason I can do that is I've been learning um, Master Jenny's wisdom along the day. So when these things happen, for some reason, I mentally I was ready to accept that. Wow, so yeah. they, the aphorisms prepared you. Correct. Yeah, so uh, the beauty of this thing is uh, because we have to get ourselves ready to encounter all this unplanned. And by reading this, it, it gets us there. Well, it seems like the Jinxi aphorisms are multi-purpose, but I believe the key purpose is to help people remain calm in times of chaos and uncertainty. Thus, in the next segment, despite having fears of rejection, our volunteers remain resolute to make it happen even in Las Vegas, the Sin City. I can't tell you, it stays in Vegas. Las Vegas, it's our favorite city in USA. See what shows are available. Oh, will my wife see this? There's a lot. If we could just go from the beginner strip to the end of the strip, I would say more than at uh, least 60 people. Give me a community car. It is a very special, very unique city because it has its own characters that no other cities has because it's a gambling town, is what we call the Sin City. So the mentality and the objective for the people or the business in this city is very different. I don't see this book hurting Las Vegas, but does this make any dollars and cents to them because these are publicly traded companies. They, they concentrate on profit, not people. If you drive around in Las Vegas, you could see all the pawn shops. Usually, you know, like people lose their money. That's how they get into different things. They will do different things and then they go drink and then they cause other problem and then they cannot solve the problem. They will start taking drugs. So uh, it's, it's, an, it's an effort that needs to put in specially compared to the other city, but then um, it's an effort that we must do. So that's why we're here. I feel different now when I come back to the casinos. When I went to the casinos before, I got excited all the time. In my eyes and mine, there were these brightly colorful slot machines and chips. They will invite you and treat you like a VRP guest with free hotel room and you can stay as long as you want. After winning for 19 weeks consecutively, I lost everything I had won within four weeks. The scariest part is when you sit at the gambling table you've lost and you would want to bet more to win your money back. I was so focused that I didn't want to eat. 
I didn't want to sleep. I could sit there for over 30 hours doing nothing but gambling. I had to borrow money from friends. I had lost my one month salary with just one bet. My whole family suffered that one month. Sometimes at work, I would be absent-minded and be obsessed with the exciting thoughts of gambling. So something happened during work. My fingers were crushed by the machine that I was operating. They were completely polarized. After joining Zheji, I quit gambling because one of the commandments for the Zheji members is no gambling. Now, when I am in the casinos, I have one goal in mind, and that is how can I help and save all these lost souls at the gambling tables. Hi, how are you? Hi. Yeah, my name is John Su. We are from uh, Zheji Foundation. Yeah. Uh, we will uh, have a special program, you know, to give uh, the uh -huh. book uh, uh, away, you know. I keep a Bible, mm -hmm. but I don't keep anything else. Um, this actually is not not the uh, religion. It, 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 with the one one word, you know, we have. It's just simple and uh, really. You, you, they, they even use this uh, for elementary school, for high school. Okay. Yes. Well, if you want to, I have 20. Six rooms. Okay. Then in that case, I give you 30 of them. Then if you are guests, they like it, they can take it home. Okay. Then we are... Well, we then have a couple of... I'll put this one in a room. Yes. Okay? All right. I'll read it a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah, I'll sure. Okay, yeah, I bring okay. over. The, that's just for you. All right, fine. Yeah, okay. sure. No problem. Yeah, yeah. Hey, thank you. Hey, At the beginning, we targeted the largest hotel on the strip. We planned big, but we realized it is way too difficult. From one hotel to another, we worked very hard for one year and four months, but we couldn't even give away one book. For all big hotels like ours, you have to submit this project and get permission from all the departments. It's very bureaucratic and political. And also, there are thousands of rooms in each of the big hotels. They have to make sure each room has a book. Who is going to do this job? It takes a lot of effort to promote books among big hotels, but we can try the medium to small-sized hotels outside the Strip. We can visit them first and tell them even they are doing business in the Sin City. They can still do something to help people out. The kind of customer we have here is usually, you know, people are in trouble or, you know, even they have been to jail before and then they got out, they tried to be, you know, hopefully they could get straight again. So uh, with this booklet, it probably will help them out a lot. So we decided to go to Border City Freeway. There are many hotels and motels, each with about 20 to 30 rooms. Our hope is to talk to the owners directly who can make the decision right away. Can we have somebody read a, a book in a hotel and very inspiring? That's why he wants to put those books in the hotels. So hopefully it will inspire people. Good. Good. <laughs> Which one do I like? Yeah. Our thoughts and actions create our destiny of heaven or hell. <laughs> so the, the purpose uh, you guys are putting in is uh, it's 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 good. Okay. I told her that you can always welcome to come here and uh, display your books and all that and uh, whatever you want to do, you're always welcome and all that. I just received very good news from our volunteers who just returned. This morning, they gave away 2,800 Qingzi aphorisms books to the hotels. This time, we received over 200 boxes. While distributing the books, if we only dwell on the difficulties, it will never be completed. We are currently in short supply and we have to wait, so today we're very happy that the books arrived. 
But then I saw this, which says, if your mind is determined, nothing is difficult to achieve. Everything is about a determination. This project helped me to realize I'm doing something towards other people. Even I don't know those people, I'm just doing a little, I this my time. Somebody's changed life. That's why I feel doing this project. I'm the one who got the, the most benefit. We bring the books out on the road. We don't know the people at the hotel. But the past two weeks, we visited 17 hotels and 11 of them accepted it. So this teaches me one thing. Do not limit yourself to what we are going to do. No matter if the road ahead will be easy or not, we will continue to walk on it. To me, I feel like I... Uh, I see all these um, benefits that's popping out here and there, even though the original purpose was to promote Jinxi into hotel and benefit the guests. But turned out it benefits everybody who's involved in, in, in different levels. So it's a win, 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 win situation. We vowed to bring the Jinxi books into 2,000 hotels this year. It sounds ambitious, but we're not worried because as long as we know the way, we are not afraid to go the distance. This is also a phrase from the Jinxi aphorism. Welcome back. So, Vic, one invaluable insight our volunteers gained from this experience is that they're still compelled to bring the books mainstream because they believe that it can be used as a mental tool to help people resolve bad habits. I believe that you actually take the opportunity to introduce the aphorisms whenever you get a chance. How come? Well, yes, um, whenever we have something useful and valuable, and yeah, we always want to share that good things with other people. Mm -hmm. So every time uh, we have this opportunity, we try to introduce these good things to uh, people who didn't have the opportunity to read it. Mm -hmm. So sometimes um, we will talk and then I will say, hey, if I give you a million dollars, if you spend three days working together, will you get it? I will do it. And mm -hmm. the people always say, yes, of course, three days, million dollars. Then I said, what if I want you to invest three days and then you would gain something more valuable uh, beyond a million dollars? Mm -hmm and you can use that the rest of your life, will you do it? And people always say, yes, I want to do it. So I just pulled it out, this aphorism, and then say, okay, now this is the thing that you can use it mm -hmm. the rest of your life. And then it's so valuable that money cannot buy. Well, it's amazing. It's because from your feedback today, we get to see the power and the beauty of the Jinx aphorisms in action. So thank you very much for being here today. We appreciate it. Thank you. And for those of you at home, I hope you enjoyed our feature today, and I'll see you soon. <laughs>